Necked dinosaur. When was the last time you had one of these in your hand? <laughs> <laughs> Try not to drop these specimens, and I want them back. <laughs> that's no joke, because I had this one specimen that's kind of ugly on one side, polished on the other. Remember my Labradorite specimen? Gorgeous on the other side. I said, to the person uninstructed in natural history, their journey through life is like a walk through a fine gallery of art. But nine-tenths of the pictures are turned to the wall. And I said, you know, see, this is kind of ugly because you don't know about it. But when you get to know it, I turned it around. It's beautiful iridescence. Well, somebody thought that was really pretty. I didn't have any Okay, so I went back. Uh, living in the seas at that time were things called ammonites. And if you look at this carefully with your hand, how many brought their hand lips? No. You guys didn't come prepared. <laughs> Jeez. Where's your college? Let me get out there. Anyways, uh, these, these were sometimes, if you go to the Smithsonian, they've got one up on, on the wall by, between the first and second story there, and it's like this big. They're humongous. Now, why do I bring these two groups up? Oh, let's tell you about them here. Ahead of the game, boy. Stop that. 
Yeah, yeah it did. And then you read wait. Okay. <laughs> That's no fair. Now, if we look at this impact crater, it's got different parts. It's got a central crater, which you would expect to be round, but it isn't because there is a, a fabric in the rock that it hit to define its shape somewhat. Okay? In other words, the rock had a grain, but it hit, it, it reflects that angularity of it, the grain of the rock. That's here. That crater is about 25 miles wide. Now listen what came out of it. Rock vapor, melted rock, which cools very quickly in the atmosphere to form tectites. Mm. How, deep, how, how deep was the water in this area at that point? Uh, about 300 feet. Mm. Uh, some people say 600 feet, but that's pretty pretty deep. Because if you do that, the shoreline's going to be way beyond where possibly. And the other thing is, when you take the microfossils out of the, the sediments, uh, that are found to the north and south outside the area, they don't indicate it down like that. This little object is a piece of glass that is actually a tectite. It's blasted out of the ground, temperatures high enough that it can melt it, pass through the atmosphere, and cool to a glass. Now, this one is one that you're in charge of making sure I get it back. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now that's a central crater. It's about uh, oh, 18 to 20 miles wide. The hole itself now is not as deep as it was. Because, okay, take your hand. Okay, get your hand. Take your finger and do this to it. When you hit it, it bends down. Well, the transient, that, that momentary impact crater was probably about eight miles deep at the time. That's a big dimple in the earth. But, you ever drop a rock in water? It goes in, creates a wave. What happens after the rock's under the water? Rebound. Yeah, there's a little flip in the middle. Well, there's actually a little flip in the middle of this impact crater as well. Because Earth rebound. So you've got this area here. Uh, in addition to melted glass or melted rock coming out of it, pieces came out of all different sizes, from powder to slightly larger ones. Boring at this site on the eastern shore, which we'll show you the site in a little bit. They drilled down, they hit igneous rock. And everybody knows that igneous rock underlies the coastal plain. Okay, good. The bean counter says, hey, we're done. 583 feet later, they went out of that boulder. Hmm. That was lifted out of the bottom, brought up, and then dropped with the mishmash at the end. We don't know how big it was this way, but it's 583 feet this way, and then back into the garbage, okay? So that, that's a really neat area, and we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more in, in another context. This out here, you guys sit up. Don't slow. <laughs> sit up. Now, why do I do that? Well, if I blast the world out here, and I'm giving an earth wave that's 100 to 200 feet. Now, the earth wave is the earth giving it way back. It's going to break the rock around it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in school, I better use you. Okay. <laughs> now, in school, remember, your teacher, okay, slow. Bring, bring your butt out this way. There you go. Keep going. Is he down? Well, that's exactly what happened in this zone right here. It's a series of slices that broke loose and then slid toward the center of the crater. Now, how far is the, is the step between these little blocks? Measured 1,400 feet in places. Mm -hmm. A sliver of like that. And so these were immense activities. Uh, this is called the annular trough, hence the name annular trough. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, it looks like a bullseye, guys. Okay, out here is a zone which is called the Outer Fracture Zone. Uh, some of the geologists that are rather up the nose about it don't recognize this zone, but it was discovered by undergraduates at the College of William and Mary working with some idiot named Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> and so this is the zone out here. <laughs> it, the interesting thing is the features they describe in here are found right here. That's not part of it because it wasn't discovered by professional geologists.